This is Resolute and the Resolute Podcast, where we are discipling and developing men to live with conviction. I am Vince Miller, your host, and today we're in a series on leadership that we have been calling the fighter pilot mindset. Today our topic is accomplishing critical tasks. Men, welcome back to the program. If this is your first time tuning in, well, thank you for joining us. The Resolute Podcast is produced numerous times each week. Come back often. We would love to have you do that. And feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or find us, as always, in iTunes. We have numerous great tools for men on our website, which is found at bresolute.org. One being our free men's daily devo. Free, gentlemen, free. It's short, simple, and sweet to get in your inbox each day. Just a short text, short thought, and a short challenge to go with it to start your day off right. You can find this and numerous other resources on our website, but let's dive in. Over the next few lessons, I want to share with you teachings I have been learning from a good friend of mine, Chris Kelzer. Chris is a former F-A-18 pilot and today teaches leadership at T-6 Victory, which is a DFW Twin Cities-based leadership program that uses flight experiences to teach civilians leadership lessons. You know, Chris's thoughts on the fighter pilot mindset are profound and I believe very compelling. And for a guy like me, who's only dreamed of being a fighter pilot, I have had the fantastic opportunity to learn from him. Chris is a remarkable man who both loves God and lives life with great excellence. For me, he is the representation of the resolute man. And by the way, if you can ever head to his school, which his website is located underneath this post on our website, I would encourage you to do so because flying with Chris is a remarkable remarkable and rememberable experience. I mean, something that you will remember for the rest of your life. Over the next few lessons, we're going to be looking at what T6 Victory teaches about the fighter pilot mindset. Here's their definition of the FPM. The fighter pilot mindset selflessly commits to normalized excellence, willingly chooses to be accountable, habitually accomplishes critical tasks, and continuously improves by using quality tools. You know, their definition of this mindset is composed of four factors that I would love to address. The topic today is accomplishing critical tasks. You know, to understand the fighter-pilot mindset, We must keep in mind that the fighter pilot lives in constantly changing environments because military operations are always human endeavors. Engagement with an opponent never happens in a static environment. Therefore, the fighter pilot must adapt to the opponent's conditions and the moves and the counter moves of his opponent. While a pilot will impose his will on the target, the enemy will resist, and this counter move is always and completely unpredictable. Therefore, he's required to be constantly thinking and rethinking. This was a major learning for me about the fighter pilot. Also, while engaging with the opposition, the fighter pilot must also act within the boundaries of his mission. His objective is to respond to the force opposing him, but also to operate in conjunction, in conjunction with his team and the mission. His team and commanding unit are relying on him to accomplish his critical tasks so that a goal can be achieved together. Guys, this is next level thinking. Because not only does the fighter pilot think about the opponent's move and counter moves, but he has to be simultaneously thinking about how his team relies on him to complete the tasks that are mission critical. In this, they are also synchronizing and integrating their goal and work into the larger mission. Now, this absolutely just blew my mind about how much a fighter pilot is thinking all the time. So when I was flying with Chris recently, I saw all this come into play. On the ground, 
Chris walked me through the plane and checked every inch and moving part of the T-6. He then had me suit up for the mission. And as I put on my jumpsuit, he explained the particular mission and elements of the mission. He and three other pilots had prepared for over a month for this one, one and a half hour mission. Chris then explained to me the critical tasks for the mission, including how to use the parachute strapped to my back, what to do in an emergency, and a brief understanding of the instrument panel along with items that were around me that I was allowed to touch and some that I was not allowed to touch. In all, it took about an hour of prep time, but I could tell that there were years of training for Chris and weeks of preparation put into this moment and every mission that Chris flies. Throughout all this, Chris held a checklist in hand, and one by one, he checked the critical tasks off the list. You know, perhaps one of the most memorable moments for me was why we were flying. Chris met up skillfully with three other men from three different cities in Minnesota. In the lead was a former U.S. astronaut guiding the formation. And they each met up in strategic locations, one by one, falling into formation. Our mission was to simulate a dive bomb scenario on a Minnesota lake (laughs) get-together. You know, we took numerous passes dropping smoke on the lake party using four different formations. As awesome as all this was, I would have to say the most memorable moment was watching Chris And all the other pilots glued to the leader and observing their intense focus, not only to their formation, but to their surroundings. As a civilian, I was stirred by the complexity and focus required by a fighter pilot. And remember, we were not flying at jet speeds, breaking the speed of sound, battling against an opponent. (laughs) What I learned during my time was how important it is to perform critical tasks and how they relate to flying a successful mission. I am not too sure that most leaders, most leaders, could handle a complex set of tasks like this, which is why the fighter pilot must be one of the best of the best at habitually accomplishing critical tasks. It is not an effort to just check items off a list, but to understand why the tasks are important and how they connect to the team and freely perform the mission at hand that is constantly living in a changing environment. So, how does all this apply to real life? Well, I think my key takeaway from flying with Chris on this day was how particularly Challenging it is to perform critical tasks with excellent in life consistently. And why? Well, because we live in a world full of distractions, don't we? For example, I can't recount how many times I have launched a web browser only to have become so distracted and entertained by social media that I closed the browser only to realize that I did not complete the task that I set out to do when I started. (laughs) How many of you have done this? I know I have numerous times. This single distraction illustrates how hard it is to habitually accomplish critical tasks, especially in our world today, to habitually accomplish them and maintain a mindset like a fighter pilot has. In life. You know, the Christian man, I believe, is especially challenged because I believe that everything I've learned from Chris translates beautifully into my own spiritual life. While we each know that our spiritual life is the most important mission in life, we rarely fulfill spiritual tasks as if they are mission critical. 
We're distracted by human vices all the time that keep us from our primary mission, just like a browser opening up in our life. They pull us away from the mission that God has called us to. And these distractions can be both external and internal to us. Distractions which include things like the following. For example, first, being overly self-focused and concerned with ourself. You know, I believe this is one of those internal distractions that's always tempting us, guys. There's moments you know that we all get lost in our issues and problems, and we can lose sight of God and our mission with Him. I believe lust is another major distraction for men. And while we might be carried away into sexual temptation, our our lust is not always sexual in nature, right? Our lust could be a desire for more of anything outside the boundaries of God's will. For example, a, a hunger for power or hunger for influence or desire for success or desire for possessions or a drive for prestige. These are all lusts that are very distracting for men. Another distraction is just simply entertainment. We are entertained everywhere, guys, and constantly distracted, including sometimes far too much in our churches. And if this is not enough, our phones that lie in our pockets have become the incessant entertainment device. And we all know that the average guy is spending about two hours a day on his phone, which means often that he's getting a lot, maybe too much, entertainment from the phone in his pocket rather than being focused on mission critical tasks that relate to his own spiritual life and i think we could build a list all day long of the things that distract us you can come up with your own and sometimes they can be good things just not what's best right all this talk of distractions reminds me of the story of mary and Martha in the New Testament. And while we may know this story, let me read it again for you. It's from Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. So here's the imagery here. Jesus is heading into a village. And as he enters the village, which we know to be Bethany, uh, a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And Martha went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. (laughs) But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. You know, this is a great story, a great story, and it may be a very familiar story to many of you, but I want you to notice one thing about this text. It was not that what Martha was doing was bad, We must recognize it was good to prepare a meal and to be hospitable as it was a custom to greet travelers with certain accommodations in their culture. However, the distraction of preparing was taking precedence and priority over the critical task of the moment. What Martha is inferring in her desire to have Mary help was that she too wants to participate. However, the customs of the moment were taking precedence and priority over the presence of Christ. And Martha wanted to draw Mary into this, maybe for both their benefits. And Jesus helps us to see that these small distractions, while sometimes good, can lead to mission slippage from the critical tasks that take priority. Mary lived on a mission and focused on Jesus, and Martha had a different mission. It was work to work to please Jesus. And oh, how we slip into the second mission, which is far less important than the primary mission. The simple application of a message like this is to Just remove the distractions. 
Remove the distractions, men. Remove them. Remove them from all parts of your life. Turn social media off. Take a fast from television. Close out your browser. Shut off the text alerts and get some focus. Order your priorities and stick to them and remain focused habitually. And don't give up. In our world today, there are far too many distractions that enable us to lose focus on the one thing that should take preeminence in our life, Jesus Christ and his mission for us. So guys, here it is. Start your day with him and think about him habitually all day long and what he wants for you and what he wants from you. Guys, today I have a great short reading for you in the post on the website under this topic by Charles Hummel. If you have never read it, then you need to read it today if you feel like your life is full of non-mission critical tasks that are distracting you from what is mission critical. It will turn your mindset upside down if you read it or maybe right side up. Just go to beresolute.org, select ongoing content, go to the series on fighter pilot mindset and select this lesson. Members, there are all kinds of great tools here for you that come with your membership. So please dig in. And well, gentlemen, that's the show. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, but please know this time we spent together is worthless unless you act on it. And I personally want to help you by putting resources in your hand. So go to the website at beresolute.org, go to our content, and if you don't have a membership, get one today. It's only $10 a month if you email me today. I will send you a coupon code for a membership that will help you help you to become the man that God wants you to be. And please know, I want you to be spiritually successful as a man of God. So guys, get off the bench and into the game. And please join us right back here next time for another edition of the Resolute Podcast.